As a path to self-liberation for modern citizens, it is necessary to place emphasis on the body tissues that were emphasized by early Marx and by Japanese Marxist scholar and sociologist Munsuk Mita, and to promote jihad pseudo self-activation in order to regain a body self-determination. This presentation is that the seeds of this can be found in the practice of Ogowa Yosushi, the first Japanese doctor of Tibet. Looking at the current situation, the socialism advocated by Marx has not been successful as a nation or a movement. However, Marx's analyses and perspectives, particularly those of the early period, raise important issues that are connected to the theory of the body. For example, the German ideology states, the first premise of all human history is, of course, the existence of living human individuals. Thus the first fact to be established is the physical organization of these individuals and their consequent relation to the rest of nature. They men themselves begin to distinguish themselves from animals as soon as they begin to produce their means of subsistence, a step which is conditioned by their physical organization. The substructure-superstructure concept proposed by Marx has been interpreted as economy consciousness within the socialist movement, but what Marx emphasized in his early work was physical organization. I think of the concept of infrastructure-superstructure as physical organization consciousness. In fact, Japanese Marxist scholar and sociologist Munsuk Mita focused on the importance of the body dot. Mita presented his work on the interpretation of Marxism and introduced practitioners of physicality and spontaneous movement in Japan, such as Michizo Nogu's gymnastics, Toshihoru Takeuchi's theatrical practice, and Haruchika Nogu's practice. In the 1980s, when I was a student at the University of Tokyo, Mita was a professor, and I saw many students participating in his courses, including physical practice. Mita write about Nogu in his article Sifu Banri. Haruya Nogu, who has devoted himself to treatment for 30 years, has come into touch over 1 million vertebrae. Nogu's method is what might be called phenomenology of the interbody, which sets aside all scientific and religious explanations and relies on the phenomenon of 1 million bodily sensations. Nogu says, Someone will explain it to you in 30 years' time. Nogu's method is to be constantly surprised and impressed by the facts in front of him or rather, in his immediate surroundings, and from there he constantly establishes a new theory of the human world. As chairs Tetsuro Tanajiri and Laura Lopez Koto noted, the practice of Nogu Haruya, which Mita focused on, is spreading not only in Japan but around in the world. Like Nogu, who caught Mita's attention, Tibetan Dr. Yosushi Ogowa is another practitioner of the phenomenology of interbody. This article reports on Yosushi Ogowa's background and practice. After graduating from the Faculty of Pharmacy at a Japanese university, Ogowa went to Tibet and became the first foreigner to become a Tibetan doctor through the Mensi Kang, a training course for Tibetan doctors. In his book I Became the Only Tibetan Doctor in Japan, Ogowa introduces Tibetan medicine as follows. Tibetan medicine is counted among the four major Eastern medical systems along with Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, and Yunani medicine. It is a psychiatric system rooted in Tibetan Buddhism, and its scriptures are the four medical texts Gyushi, compiled by the 8th century physician Euthok, and as its name suggests, it is made up of four sections. Pulse and urine diagnosis are well developed, and treatment is based on herbal medicines, which Tibetan doctor, known as Amchi, collect in the Himalayan mountains. Ogowa challenged five years of Tibetan medical training in Mensi Kang, learning everything from Buddhism to collecting local plants and making medicines. Then Ogowa passed the final exam, in which he had to recite 80,000 characters of the sacred texts, the four medical canon, in front of the general public for four and a half hours, to become an Amchi. After a short period of training in Tibet, Ogowa decided not to remain in Tibet but to return to Japan to continue spreading the ideas of Tibetan medicine in Japan. In his book, Ogowa writes, I don't have to become a mystical Amchi. By grappling with Tibetan medicine and changing myself, perhaps I can have a subtle ripple-like influence on faraway Japan. In 2009, he opened the forest medicine private school Marino Kusarijuku in Motsumoto, Nagano Prefecture, where he practices medicine and gives lectures all over Japan. People from all over the country, including those interested in Tibet and Tibetan Buddhism, medicinal plants, and spontaneous movement and natural healing powers, have invited him to give lectures. 
Ogawa also holds experimental courses on the process of making medicine from herbs. In recent years, the subject matter has expanded, and he has held discussions with people in the fields of art and cultural anthropology, lectured at academic conferences such as the Japan Society of Oriental Medicine and the Japan Society of Traditional Acupuncture and Moxibustion, written for the specialist journal Cell Applied Cellular Complementary and Alternative Medicine Volume 2, and lectured to medical school applicants. From the above report, I think that there are three significances to Ogawa's practice. First, it is the restoration of physicality and jihast pseudo, which Mita paid attention to but did not spread sufficiently. Tibetan medicine itself is a system in which one's own body tissues are used to utilize natural plants in nature, and participants in Ogawa's courses are able to realize this. In particular, the experience of making medicine from medicinal herbs in nature is a particularly strong element of this. Secondly, Ogawa also has the attitude of starting from practice, which impressed Mita with Nogu. Nogu said, I'm going to touch more than a million vertebrae and build a theory of the human world, saying, someone will explain it to me in 30 years. Ogawa was recognized as a doctor among the general public while working on making medicine from collected plants in Tibet, and now in Japan he speaks to many people through lectures and medicine making in nature, an approach that is similar to Nogu. Thirdly, it has the potential to be an opportunity to re-examine the state of medical care in Japan and the world, and to regain a body that can make its own decisions. In Japan today, doctors become doctors after completing their education at medical school and passing the national medical examination, and gaining an understanding of standard medical care, also known as Western medicine. In this process, there is no direct interaction with the people, such as the graduation exam held on a rock under the watch of the people in Tibetan medicine. In addition, because of the emphasis on EBM evidence-based medicine and thorough information management on computers, there is little opportunity for in-depth conversation with patients or pulse diagnosis, and medicines tend to be prescribed mechanically based on test results. And within this medical system, the Japanese people tends to develop a passive, dependent relationship, going to the hospital when symptoms appear and being examined by a doctor, rather than relying on their own initiative and self-healing powers. This is also one of the reasons for the soaring medical costs. Ogawa's practice can provide a clue to correcting the distortions in the medical system not only in Japan but also around the world, and to restore the body that can make body self-determination as an infrastructural element.